After surviving relentless attacks from mercenary forces in the escalating oil wars, the employees of Yutan Chinese oil refinery in the Middle East will be extracted from the building by a private security team from China. The team is led by Commander Dragon Luo, who is now staring at half of a pic of the family that he hasn't seen in ages. When they make it to the plant, they find it heavily damaged because it's always under attack from the rebels. They meet the head of the company Professor Cheng, who immediately begins sharing her evacuation plans, they have no choice but to go through the highway of death to be able to reach the green zone. Meanwhile former US Marine Chris meets with his brother Henry, who leads a group of mercenaries that Chris likes to make fun of. Henry brings a good amount of money with a mission, they must kidnap an international criminal who is being extracted to the green zone. However Chris turns the offer down, afterward Chris returns to his village, where he takes care of a bunch of orphan kids. The village's water pump is currently broken, so Owen comes to take a look. The damage is severe and it's going to cost a lot of money to fix it, so Chris begins reconsidering Henry's offer. Back in the plant, Luo and his team prepare of a plan to protect the civilians while employee Mei watches from the window, not daring to face Luo yet. The next morning, they shut up all the computers and Shin puts the key in her bag, which she passes to Mei. Then the team guides the employees to board a bunch of buses, unaware that a traitor is putting a mark on the bus that will carry Chin. Mei will be on Luo's bus, which she isn't happy about. The helicopters that brought the team will be pushing ahead to the green zone, so the team is on their own now. As the buses take off, Mei accidentally drops her notebook and reveals she has the other half of the picture, because it turns out she's Luo's daughter. However all Luo's attempts to make friendly conversation are ignored. Eventually they reach the highway of death, which is a section of the road filled with traps and destroyed cars that fell for them. It's a very dangerous area and almost nobody survives crossing it. There are kids, begging for help everywhere, but they're also part of the trap and the buses just keep going. When they find two cars blocking the road, Luo just pushes them with the front of the bus to open the way. Things begin blowing up around the destroyed cars yet the team just keeps on advancing, knowing it's all a trick to lure in the innocent. Seeing Mei's worry, Luo promises to protect her, but Mei immediately calls him out. She knows he'll protect whoever his mission dictates and he doesn't really care about his family, otherwise he wouldn't have abandoned his daughter and his dying wife. The buses cross the highway of death without issues, only to then discover a sandstorm covering the road ahead, which doesn't make sense because they checked the weather earlier and it was supposed to be clear. Having no other choice, they begin driving through the sand, and Luo notices it doesn't behave like a normal storm. To make matters worse, the team members lose contact with each other and all signals on their systems are jammed. At that moment Mei notices something nearby, but it quickly disappears and she blames it on her imagination. However Mai is actually right, Chris and the mercenaries are following the buses through the storm, knowing what bus to pick thanks to the mark the guy left earlier. Once they're in position, they shoot a hook on the last bus to bring the car closer, then they use a platform to climb on it before blowing up the car. Because the vehicle is still attached to the bus by a wire, this causes it to bounce and crack the bus front window. This gives two mercenaries the chance to break through it, and they immediately knock out the guards before taking control of the bus. Meanwhile two other mercenaries jump onto the following bus and get inside as well, but here the guard gives them a fair fight. After disarming each other, the guard and the mercenary begin fighting hand to hand, but it only takes a few hits before the guard is punched through the window and out of the bus. Luckily she lies down just in time to avoid being run over. The mercenaries take over this bus too and get off the road to end their mission. Once they're clear, Henry and his mercenaries take a few of the bus passengers hostage, and Chris is mad because they seem to be civilians, not criminals. Henry tells him it's just all a trick. Minutes later, the main buses finally leave the storm and realize they're missing two vehicles. They try to contact the guards to no avail, and Luo is sure there's nothing natural about this storm. The helicopters come back to help and take Luo and Mei on a ride to search the area, which allows them to discover the enemy had been using a jet engine to push the sand. The helicopter follows the road the truck with the engine took and finds one of the buses with the guard, who tells them Americans were behind all this. The other helicopter is going through a different road and finds the mercenary cars. Both sides immediately open fire, and the guard manages to hit a mercenary car to make it explode. Chris is an excellent driver and guides the other cars to dodge all the following shots until they find a spot where they can stop and take cover to shoot back more efficiently. The helicopter tries to make a turn to catch them from behind, but the mercenaries shoot first and hit the helicopter, causing it to crash. Meanwhile the rest of the team takes the buses to the green zone while Luo's helicopter finds the last bus and discovers most passengers are there, but they took Cheng and her assistants hostage. Back to the mercenaries, they arrive at the base and Chris pushes Henry, demanding to know what he's been dragged into. At that moment it's revealed that the mercenaries had been hired by Owen, who is the leader of the group that has been attacking the refinery. He explains he got tired of working for oil companies and now he's planning to steal it all for himself to make the big bucks, he also offers Chris a job as his security officer because Henry is too young and desperate. Chris turns him down and leaves, ignoring his brother's pleas to stay. Afterward Henry tries to tell Owen that they don't need him and he can do the job, but Owen answers by shooting him, and his men shoot the mercenaries that aren't part of Owen's personal team. 
Moments later, Luo is back in the helicopter and sees Chris drive by. He considers shooting but decides it's better to follow him instead. The helicopter is low on fuel, so they'll drop Luo and leave. Meanwhile Chris returns to his house and punches a picture frame, overwhelmed by guilt. One of the kids asks him to come out and play, and that's the moment Luo finds him. He takes the ball and starts throwing it at Chris, demanding answers, but Chris refuses to say anything. When the kid interrupts to ask for the ball, Luo doesn't want to scare him and pretends to leave, but actually he's still following Chris. Afterward, Chris leaves in his truck to meet with Henry at their usual spot. However when he enters the abandoned building, he's devastated to discover his brother's dead body, which Owen left just to taunt him. Luo slowly makes his way inside too, only to be jumped on from behind by Chris, and a fight ensues. Both men are excellent fighters and keep asking questions as they throw each other plenty of kicks and punches, but they both refuse to answer. Chris takes out a knife, but Luo knows the moves to stop it, and soon both guys are using whatever object they can find in the room to attack. Then Chris tries to push a vehicle on Luo, who moves out of the way just in time and drags Henry's body away with him so it doesn't get squashed. Luo is about to throw a grenade, but Chris stops him and their arguing finally makes them realize they have an enemy in common. At that moment a bunch of French officials arrive demanding money, it seems Owen has tricked them as well. While trying to tell them off, Chris accidentally pulls the pin from the grenade, and the French men leave before it explodes. Then Kais and Luo put the pin back to prevent the explosion, before checking outside to confirm the French men are only returning to their trucks to get their weapons and open fire. The duo rushes back inside and begins arguing again over finding the right bullets. Since they can't find what they need, Chris ends up opening a hole in the wall and Luo passes him grenades that get thrown through the hole. After a few grenades, the shooting suddenly stops, so Luo takes the chance to take out his gun and demand answers from Chris again, but Christ just comes out to check on his truck, only to find it destroyed. Afterward Chris finally tells Luo about Owen while they put up a bunch of grenades to blow up the building before they leave. Meanwhile Owen takes Ching and the other hostages to the refinery because he wants Ching to give him access to the reserve so that he can steal the oil. At first Ching refuses, so Owen begins killing hostages to make her talk. The last one turns out to be her son, so she finally breaks in order to save him. Ching explains that the computer key and the codes were left in her bag, which she doesn't have. Owen is getting angry, so Cheng's son tells them to track her phone, which is in the bag as well. Back in the village, Luo and Chris come back to check on the kids. Mei hears Cheng's phone ring in the bag and picks up the call, but the caller immediately hangs up. Luo calls his team and confirms all the employees safely made it to the green zone. Afterward he discovers Chris entertaining the kids with a song and decides to join them by acting like the animals from the lyrics. Then the duo goes outside to catch a bite and Chris reveals he found May's notebook lying around. He grabbed it to add his number to it since he wants to hit on her, but all his salacious comments immediately die when Luo tells him she's his daughter, although their relationship is ruined. Chris shares how he lost his father in a battle for his country, but Luo explains to him that protecting the country also means protecting the family living in it, and that's what Chris' dad had been doing for his sons. This is overheard by May, who begins to understand her dad better now. Suddenly they hear suspicious steps entering the village. May takes the kids away while Luo and Chris sneak around to discover Owen's men are coming for them. Chris enters a building and knocks out a guy by smashing him against a wall, while Luo jumps on the roof and knocks out a sniper. Another shooter immediately corners him, but then Chris joins him and jumps on the guy, causing the roof to crumble down and the duo to fall. They quickly leave the building and hide to wait for the next guy. Luo gives a signal when he comes closer and Chris quickly jumps on him to knock him out before he can shoot. However Chris doesn't understand the other signal Luo makes and they almost get caught, thankfully Luo rushes to Chris and makes him shoot the following guy. Afterward, Chris takes the roofs again while Luo goes through the back and begins fighting any man he sees, having no trouble knocking them out one by one. Chris shoots a few guys too, but this reveals his location and the enemy shoots a rocket at his balcony, causing him to fall. Thankfully Chris rolls out of the way right before the tower falls on him. Then Chris goes looking for Mei and takes Cheng's phone before bringing it to Owen's men. The people of the village come out to help defend their home, however the enemy responds by revealing a grenade. They explain they want the bag, so to avoid bloodshed, Chris gives it to them while ignoring May's pleas. This effectively causes Owen's men to leave. In the morning, May explains why the enemy wanted the bag. At first Chris doesn't care about some idiot stealing a bit of oil, but May points out this would actually be the biggest oil heist in history and how it would affect the whole country. Now Chris wants to help so he offers his truck with the engine to get there. Luo tells May not to come because it's too dangerous, and she warns them not to use guns in the refinery to avoid an explosion. After they leave, May notices there's one more car available for her. In the refinery, the bag arrives and Owen gives it to Ching, who immediately activates the computers to save her son. The oil starts flowing through the pipes and reaches some huge ships that are waiting at the coast for the deal. When the duo finally arrives, the guards open fire and even shoot a rocket, but Chris is good at dodging it all. 
He drives the truck through all the barriers on the road and enters the refinery, but when an oil truck blocks the way, he makes a sudden turn and crashes against a platform that falls and fills the area with a cloud of dust. Now everyone knows they're here, but the dust gives them the chance to leave the truck and sneak around. Owen takes the key from the computer so the oil can't be stopped and leaves with his personal guards while sending the rest after the intruders. Back to the duo, Luo climbs a tower, but before Chris can follow him, they both get surrounded by guards and another fight begins. Thankfully the duo is very good at defending themselves against multiple enemies, Luo stands on a pipe so fewer men can come after him at the same time, and Chris grabs a huge pipe to hit multiple men at once. When Luo almost falls dodging an attack, Chris uses the same pipe to push him back up and hit a few men before transporting Luo onto another platform. Owen uses this moment to say goodbye to them, and more men arrive to continue the fight. Chris and Luo split to keep on knocking out guys without the use of guns, and after a few more punches, they finally make their way inside the main building. There's a guard waiting for them, so Luo throws a knife to distract him and Chris hits him with a hose. Luo uses this chance to make Chang and his son run, then the duo begins fighting the guard, exchanging a few hits before hiding behind the computers. As it happened earlier, they try to share weapons and make the incorrect exchange, so Luo has to roll over and almost gets shot in the process. Chris and the guard open fire at the same time, but after a few shots, Chris runs out of bullets. Luckily Chris is able to make a plan and begins talking his head off as a distraction, allowing Luo to sneak around and jump on the guy by surprise, pushing him through the nearest window. While Luo takes care of the guard, Chris goes after Owen, but he can't run fast enough to match the speed of a car. At that moment Mei arrives in Chris' other truck, so they go after Owen together. There are weapons under the seat and Chris explains the American way is to have guns everywhere. Back in the refinery, Luo and the guard are fighting hand to hand, and Chen watches from afar. When Luo turns to tell her to leave, the guard tries to escape by climbing the machinery, so Luo uses a fire-blocking foam gun to stop him by making him slip and block his vision. Unfortunately the gun breaks and Luo falls as well. Now the foam is raining all over the place, and Luo grabs some wires to attach to his belt that will allow him not to drown. The guard jumps on him again, but Luo quickly pushes him away and soon both men are climbing the structure while still fighting each other. When they fall into the foam, they continue to fight there, and thanks to the wires Luo gets the advantage and pushes the guy against the machinery, finally knocking him out. Afterward Luo uses a fan to get rid of all the foam before leaving. On the road, Owen's guard opens fire and Chris immediately shoots back until the enemy is out of bullets. Then Owen's car goes off the road, thinking Chris' old truck won't be able to survive the desert. There are a few hills ahead of them, and May manages to jump through the first one with no issues, but the second proves to be harder and the car crashes. May and Chris don't know what to do, but luckily Luo shows up in the engine truck and the trio goes after Owen again. Soon they realize the truck is too slow, but Chris reveals the engine isn't only useful to make sandstorms. He presses a button and the engine goes all out, making the truck go at a great speed that allows it to reach the oil trucks and crash against one of them. The oil truck flies high and lands against the other trucks, triggering a chain of explosions that make Owen lose all the oil and send his car flying too. The driver dies of burns, but Owen survives with only half his face damaged. Desperate to survive, Owen offers Chris money again, but Chris turns him down so Owen pushes the body out and drives away. Luo tries to go after him, but the truck's tank is leaking and creating mud, making the truck get stuck. Chris tells May to press a different button and this activates two side sleighs that allow the truck to slide through the sand using the power of the engine. Luo and May drive while Chris holds onto the side of the truck, and when they finally find Owen in his car, they push it toward a cliff, only for Owen to move the car out of the way. Luo warns Chris that they're about to fall too, but Chris doesn't hear him. Then Luo ties himself and May up so they jump out of the truck right before it falls, bringing Chris down too. When the pair looks up, they discover the rope is attached to Owen's car, and when Owen notices this he decides to bring them down with him. The car goes off the cliff and Owen grins thinking he won, but luckily Luo cuts off the rope just in time so he and May safely land on a rock platform. After Owen crashes into his death, May and Luo call Chris' name to no avail. At that moment May discovers Luo has her notebook and opens it to see he put the picture pieces back together. Father and daughter reconcile with a hug, but the sweet moment is interrupted by Chris, who has been climbing up all along. They help him up and another argument begins with Luo when Chris tries to hit on May. They realize they're stuck there, so the only way they have to get out is to start screaming for help. Meanwhile, Luo's team surrounds the ship stealing the oil and arrests everyone involved. Moments later the trio is rescued and they return to the village, where they fix the pump together and bring water back. The celebration is interrupted by the team announcing they have a new mission and Luo invites Chris to join them. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. So feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one, bye.